Okay, here we go. Um, it is Tuesday, July 9th, 2019, Journal 104, T98. T98. Um, July 9th is my wife's birthday. Um, she keeps saying that all she wants for a present for her birthday is me coming home. Well, she's getting that present. Um, it somehow seems terribly inadequate. Um, there's something essentially wrong about it being her birthday and, the, and me getting me getting the present, me receiving the present, and the present was her care, her love, her consideration, her infinite patience. Uh, in reminding me uh, what I should and shouldn't, could and couldn't be doing uh, to ensure that I don't screw this opportunity up. And, uh, you know, I, I talked about a lot of different things and a lot of, uh, some of them deeper than others, I guess. And and, and uh, I don't know how many of you believe in, in uh, love at first sight or kismet or any of those things. Uh, my wife and I, for those of you who don't know the story, uh, met on uh, a blind date, a blind date that she didn't want to go on and, and a blind date that I certainly didn't want to go on. Um, Leslie's mom had passed away the year before we met. We were, we were, we were being, both of us were being pressured to go out on a date then, and that would have been a disaster. I'm sure of that. Um, I'm absolutely positive that that would have not gone well because um, it was too close to her passing, Leslie's mother's passing. But um, when she was coming home from school, my mother started working on me because a friend of hers in in her uh, circle of friends uh, had met Leslie through her daughter, who was a good friend of Leslie's mother. I know that's complicated, and I'm sorry. You have to draw a chart, a line chart somewhere. And uh, kept telling kept telling uh, both of us that that you know that she was a beautiful, uh, very sweet young woman. And that I was a really nice young man, which couldn't have at the, at the time that could not have been further from the truth. Um, in, in the, in the, in the, <laughs> in a sense of full disclosure, it could not have been further from the truth. Um, I was nice around my mother's friends. I was nice around my parents, but I mean, I was known to, uh, like Jekyll and Hyde turned into a completely different animal the minute I walked out the door. Um, and, uh, and, and finally, you know, finally I said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll call, I'll call, I'll call. And, and I, and I, I did call and, and, uh, it was right around this time of the year, actually. And, uh, I think I called on July 4th and we went out on July 6th, if I remember correctly. If Leslie happens to see this blog, I, I know I'm going to get corrected. Uh, she remembers thinking very clearly, well, that's rude, uh, calling that late and making uh, making a date that late. And I remember thinking, well, at least it's over with. I've done it. And uh, everything that could possibly have gone wrong up until that point went wrong. Uh, and it's really kind of comical because, you know, being in the business that I was in, I had, had just purchased a brand new um, Dodge Coronet. And on the way out there, the power steering quit. I don't know if you know anything about driving vehicles with hydraulic power steering. When the power steering stops, it's like driving. It's worse than driving uh, a vehicle without power steering because you have to overcome the hydraulics. Uh, and I was really frustrated and upset because it was a new car. It was, I mean, it was literally a brand new car. And uh, I realized that we couldn't go very far with that car. And I had to get it someplace quickly. Uh, 
And I remember walking in the in the door to Leslie's house and, and thinking to myself, this is not auspicious at all. Um, it's going to be terrible. I, I met at that time um, Leslie's next youngest sister, Amy, and the twins, Susan and Diane. Um, and they were cute. I mean, it, it, they were all adorable, cute, nice, what you would expect from a nice home like that. And uh, I remember looking to my right as Leslie came out of her bedroom and started walking down the hall. And my first reaction, my honest reaction at that moment was run. I remember thinking to myself, get the hell out of here as fast as you can, because if you stay, if you go out with this girl, your life as you know it will end this evening. And uh, I didn't run. God knows I thought about it. Um, I had an excuse. The car was broken. I didn't use the excuse. What I did do was say, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to uh, my folks place on Olympic Boulevard. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch cars so that we can continue this date. Because she, I mean, she was really very special looking. And um, what I didn't tell Leslie at the time was that our next door neighbors were in the house hanging out with my parents and my two brothers and the dog and my grandparents who had just flown in from New York to visit. And uh, we finally got back to, to, to the house. And we walked inside. Leslie said she's never felt that naked in her life. Uh, having everybody stare at her. Uh, my parents weren't used to me go going out with nice girls. Uh, and I certainly had one at my arm when we went in the house. And we went on to dinner at, at one of our favorite restaurants and started talking. And, and uh, now by the time we got done with dinner, there, uh, there wasn't enough time it was too, well, it was, it, there wasn't enough time to go to a movie because it was too late and it wasn't a good idea to go home because it was too early. So I, I said to Leslie, and this is, this is the restaurants in Santa Monica on the outskirts of Santa Monica. And, uh, I said, listen, let's just go down. To, you know, my favorite thing in the world is to just sit at the ocean and listen, uh, there's something very soothing about all of that. And, and I said, let's, you know, we'll go down there. I promise I'll be a gentleman. Um, and we'll talk, we'll get to know each other. And that's what we did. And, and, uh, what we didn't do is pay attention to what time it was. And I wound up bringing Leslie home an hour or two hours after her curfew. Uh, but we talked about, everything. And I knew at that moment that my life as I knew it was over. The next morning, Leslie went to a friend of her mother's, dear, you know, a good friend of the family and said, I, I just want to let you know in the future when this finally comes to pass that, that um, I just went out with the man I'm going to marry. And, uh, and ultimately we did get married. And uh, somewhere along in all of that, Leslie's father tried to convince her not to marry me because I'd never be able to support her in the style to which she had become accustomed. And we fooled him. Uh, we've had a, a, a great life, two great kids. And, and um, so if we're not talking about my illness, except in the regard that she has taken incredible care of me over the, the whole length of my illness and has been the balancing act uh, that everyone, the caregiver that everyone needs uh, trying to get through a situation like I'm in the process of getting through. Um, I guess this will be my, my, uh, my present in a way to immortalize that and to let her know how much I care and how much I love her. And how incredibly, uh, powerful 
her strength has been throughout this. So on that happy note, uh, I'll leave you this evening with a promise to talk about something else tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, stay well, take care. Uh, wake up in the morning and then tell yourself and everybody else you meet it's going to be a great day, and I bet you it will. Bye-bye.